How good was AJ Styles' WWE rookie year from 2016 to 2017? Let's watch. This was the confused face of Roman Reigns in the 2016 Royal Rumble. This was the reason why he was so confused. And this was AJ Styles just nine months into his WWE career. The WWE nine months. World Heavyweight Champion. But how did we get here? AJ oh, Styles WWE. Okay, a okay, world okay. Renowned performer. Damn, just nine months though? And from there, he competed in WCW, WWF, ROH, and various independent promotions before he became That's one of the crazy. premier faces of TNA. After spending over 10 years in TNA, capturing the TNA World Championship, and in many ways being the poster boy of that company, he made a departure to go work for New Japan Pro Wrestling, where he became the leader of the Bullet Club. If there was an independent promotion, AJ Styles had been there, done that. A journeyman of sorts, you could say. He possessed an offensive style which was very hard to replicate, his promos were concise and to the point, and he could pull off a great match with literally anyone. It was his time in New Japan where rumors started to swirl. AJ Styles was now a free agent. Many rumors suggested that WWE was going to be his landing spot, but we still didn't know. It was the 2016 Royal Rumble and out he walked. Roman Reigns had the biggest deer in the headlights look on his face, but the crowd they weren't no dummies. They knew exactly who this was. AJ Styles was in the WWE and he was here to stay. He had an impressive performance in the Rumble lasting 29 minutes before being tossed out by Kevin Owens and the next night on Raw, the run officially began. His first opponent was Chris Jericho. He was telling Styles that he had waited a long time to have him here, welcoming AJ to the big leagues. And obviously huh? these so-called big leagues weren't really a problem for AJ Styles as he beat Chris Jericho later that night. After that, the two teamed up to take wow. on the social outcast before Chris Jericho got his win back and evened things up at one apiece. So the rubber match would come at Fastlane, where Styles made Jericho tap out and the two showed mutual respect for one another. It was this mutual respect that led to the formation of the very short-lived team of Y2AJ. They beat the New Day and they were going to get a shot at the tag team championships but that match, they went on to lose. And Jericho mm -hmm. turned on Styles by hitting him with three code breakers. So Jericho was burning shirts, telling oh, Styles hell. that Jericho was the real great. And AJ, he was questioning it. Was Jericho really that good? This all climaxed at a match at WrestleMania <laughs> 32, where these two put on a very good match. But at the end of it, it was AJ Styles who ate the loss. And a lot of people were kind of concerned that AJ Styles isn't really where they thought he would be. You know, the typical mm -hmm. wrestling fan overreaction. But the next night after <laughs> WrestleMania, that reaction died down. AJ Styles was in a fatal four-way number one contenders match with Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens, and Cesaro. And at the end of the night, it was Styles who won the right to challenge Roman Reigns at payback for the WWE title. The build mm -hmm. was about respect, and AJ showing everyone that he was here to contend. He was here to go up against the best, and there was no one superior to him in the ring. But Gallows and Anderson were attacking Roman Reigns. And the question was, is AJ in on this? AJ told everyone that he had nothing to do with it. Reigns mm. didn't believe him and he did his normal one versus all act. And this led us to payback. And the crowd, they loved AJ Styles. This was a constant during his entire first year. Every arena you went to. All you would hear were chants of AJ Styles, AJ Styles, AJ Styles. Heel, babyface, flat earther, it didn't matter. He was loved worldwide. Roman on the other so hand. So he came into WWE well, and you started guys remember killing the reaction shit. reaction he was getting after WrestleMania 32. So the crowd was electric and so was this match. But the match came to an end when AJ Styles had a phenomenal forearm that sent both him and Roman Reigns to the announce table. Yeah. Reigns was knocked out so long that he oh couldn't my get God. back into the ring, so Styles won via countout. The match was then restarted with no countouts, and the no countouts match ended with a DQ. So the match that ended with a DQ was again restarted with no DQs. It was during that third match where Gallows and Anderson were neutralized by the Usos, and as the chaos was going on, Roman Reigns pinned Styles' shoulders to the mat to retain his title. A rematch followed at Extreme Rules, and in the lead up to that show, Styles was showing a more vicious side to his character, saying mm. that he'll do anything it takes to win the title, even attacking mm. Reigns with a steel chair in the process. We come to Extreme Rules, and this match did just that. It ruled. Some of the highlights were Styles and Reigns brawling throughout the crowd, 
AJ getting pounced onto the announce table. Another power bomb to AJ through the announce table. And of course, the ending where Reigns caught a phenomenal forearm in midair into a spear to retain his Shit. WWE title. After the match, Seth Rollins made his long-awaited return and attacked Roman Reigns. So we knew what was next for Reigns. But the question was, what was next for AJ oh Styles? Well, after Styles lost a Money in the Bank qualifying match to Kevin Owens, this question mm -hmm. was answered. John Cena returned to the WWE after five months away, and he told everyone that if the future was upon us, the future would go through him. And out mm -hmm. came AJ Styles. Told John Cena, welcome back, shook his hand in respect, and out came the club. It looked like they were coming for both Cena and Styles. After all, a week beforehand, Styles told them that they should go their separate ways. So the club's coming to attack both Cena and Styles, and they're ready to fight side by side. Cena <laughs> takes off his shirt all hyped up, and he walks right into a right hand by AJ Styles. And the club beat up John Cena. They jumped the match up? was made for the upcoming Money in the Bank <laughs> pay-per-view. The match was labeled a WrestleMania-worthy dream match. Two huh? worlds were gonna collide. John Cena and AJ Styles, arguably the two best that the industry had to offer. But before huh? they collided in Las Vegas, John Cena oh, wanted sure. some answers. Why did make Styles sure audio's good. do what he did? And AJ told Cena that he was an insult to him inside this ring, hinting at Cena's terrible in-ring ability, saying that he would run circles around Cena, and Cena just simply called AJ a bust, saying that he was a failure, to which AJ said, that as soon as you lose to John Cena, it's time to get the shovel because guys like Cena buried guys like him. The next week, mm -hmm. Cena gave AJ a choice between two contracts for their match at Money in the Bank. Either a singles match or John Cena versus the club. Telling him that he could secure his spot as captain hey. of the bitch club. He's fitting right. He, he, he fit it. Or whatever. He fits right in with WWE so good. Or he could sign the one-on-one -on -one contract and we could see if AJ Styles fits right in. was truly as good as he said he was. <laughs> AJ Styles told Cena that if he was here 15 years ago, Cena wouldn't have won 15 titles. He wouldn't have two Royal Rumble wins, wouldn't be on the magazine covers or in crappy movies. If you were there. AJ had something to prove. He signs the one-on-one -on -one contract. Okay. And this was truly one of the best promos these two had. Anytime these two got in the ring together, it was magic. They had an unmatched electricity in the ring, and it was just beautiful. We get some money in the bank, and the crowd was on AJ's side. But playing. in this match, it was the battle of the reversals. Each man having a counter for what the other did. AJ kicked out of an AA, and Cena kicked out of a Styles Clash. But the match came to an end after the ref got knocked out. Gallows and Anderson came into the ring and hit a magic killer. And Styles took the win. Mm. After winning the bank, Cena and Styles were costing each other chances to be added into the Shield triple threat match. But for Cena, there was one big problem. He was always outnumbered. So he went out and mm. found himself some backup. That backup came in the form of Enzo and Cass. So a three on three match was made for Battleground 2016. But before that, it was the WWE draft. It was announced that the brand split would be coming back and there would be exclusive rosters for both Raw and SmackDown. SmackDown now airing live on Tuesday nights. On draft night, the fourth overall pick was AJ Styles to SmackDown. Before Cena, before Orton, before Lesnar, Jericho, some of the marquee names in the WWE, it was AJ Styles who had his name called to join Team Blue. The club, on the other hand, was drafted to Raw. So AJ Styles' official home was now SmackDown Live. But before the uh... rosters became permanent, we still had battleground to get to. And on that night, the best way I can sum up this three on three match was it was just fun. It was fun, electric, an exciting tag team match. And at the end of it, Cena, Enzo, and Cass got the win. The following Tuesday, it was officially the first episode of SmackDown Live, where Styles and Cena both couldn't get the job done in a number one contender six pack challenge. So Styles turned his focus back to Cena, challenging him to a match at SummerSlam calling the Cena kids and their parents delusional, saying that you don't get a trophy for participation, asking Cena why. Why is he still here after 15 years? And Cena just said it was out of love. The match was made for SummerSlam in Brooklyn, and Styles simply told Cena I that the mean... best part of SummerSlam was going to be oh, Cena saying snap. that AJ Styles was better than him. If he didn't, he was a liar. If he did, he was a loser. 
Either way, oh my AJ god, this back wins. and forth again. These two men, it's their crazy. promos spectacular. This it's is one crazy. that's worth a rewatch. <laughs> we arrive at the final SmackDown before SummerSlam. Yo. And things are kept simple. AJ tells Cena that he's sick of him, and Cena puts Styles through the announce table. We get to SummerSlam, and what more can I say about this match? It was just something special. Absolutely electric arena. Both guys going back and forth, high spots, near falls. The match was perfectly executed. Mm. When all was said and done, it was a Styles clash and a phenomenal forearm that gave AJ Styles a 2-0 head-to-head record against John Cena. And at the end of it, Cena took off his armband, left it in the ring, signaling that the future was up in the air. So mm. Styles on SmackDown was parading around with that same armband, mm. saying that he took a piece of John Cena. That's why it looks so After loose this, on his he arm. Set his sights on Dean Ambrose's <laughs> WWE title. I was looking at that like it looked loose as hell. How he was now the face that ran the place. Daniel Bryan agreed that AJ was the number one contender, so he beat Dolph Ziggler and he was headed to Backlash to face Dean Ambrose. The build was kept pretty simple, AJ saying that he was exactly what he said he was. He was getting hung on the top rope, I guess you could say, by Ambrose. Simple but effective. The week before Backlash, Ambrose gave Styles a participation trophy and Styles simply just hit a low blow on Ambrose. We get to mm-hmm. Backlash and this match was good it was a little too long in my opinion but it picked up near the end with ambrose flying into the crowd and taking out aj ambrose goes for a dirty deed gets pushed into the ref aj hits a low blow followed by a styles clash and he became the brand new wwe world heavyweight champion just like that nine months into his wwe run he captured came in killing shit he was truly as good as he said he was. So we get to SmackDown and he's telling everyone that he's the champ who ran the camp. And then John <laughs> Cena returned. And everyone was like, oh shit, okay. man, here we go again. Really hoping that AJ Styles wasn't just a transitional champion. Cena and Ambrose were both looking to get a title match. So Shane McMahon decided to make it a triple threat at No Mercy. Cena, Ambrose, and Styles for the WWE title. Cena telling Ambrose that he had no balls. Ambrose saying that Cena was a lazy part-timer. However, this was a time where the rematch clause still existed. So Ambrose invoked it and he had a one-on-one match against AJ Styles. Styles' first televised defense and he retained it. All hell was breaking loose outside between Ambrose and Cena, but AJ still retained. The final show before Backlash goes off the air with both AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose just crapping on Cena. Talking about how he's comparing himself to the great Ric Flair and everyone's brawling through the ringside area, on the ramp and everywhere else. Ambrose gets the last laugh on this night. We get to No Mercy and this is the first match that's up. All three men come out and they give us a great match. Fast paced, near falls, everything you would Mm -hmm. expect out of these three. But it ends when both Cena and Ambrose have a submission locked in on Styles and he taps. But who won? Well, there was neither of them. The match was restarted, and after a chair shot to Cena, AJ Styles pinned John Cena one, two, Got his three. Back. <laughs> three times in under a year where Styles had pinned Cena. After this, Cena was gone, but he'll be back a little later in this video. After No Mercy came a period that divides a lot of opinion, which involves everyone's favorite Cinderella story, James Ellsworth. This he said stuff. Cinderella. He was bragging about beating both Dean and Cena, and on the same night, he said he was going to wrestle someone who deserved the opportunity. And that man, according to Styles, was James Ellsworth. So Daniel Bryan made it official. Ambrose was going to be the special guest referee, and after some stupidity, antics, and a dirty deeds, lo and I don't behold, know if that hair I is on his chin I'm on actually his neck. saying this, James Ellsworth beat WWE champion oh, wow. AJ Styles. And he the next that week, fast Ellsworth hell. got himself a WWE title match, and Styles got DQ'd, and Ellsworth once again beat AJ Styles. The dude had more wins over Styles than John Cena. The following week, it's Dean Ambrose versus AJ Styles, and Ellsworth is in Ambrose's corner, and when AJ gets dumped to the outside, Ellsworth hits a no-chin what? music. In the coming weeks, with a distraction from James Ellsworth, Ambrose earned a WWE title match against Styles at TLC, but before TLC, it was SVR. SmackDown vs Raw at Survivor Series. Included on Team SmackDown were both Dean Ambrose and the champion AJ Styles. 
So you know the drill, SmackDown was invading Raw with their mascot, James Ellsworth. We get to Survivor Series, and you guys already know how amazing this match was, but we're focusing on AJ Styles, who was put through an announce table by The Shield. Ambrose had already been eliminated, he came out to stick it to Styles, and he was pinned by Rollins and eliminated. So the show after Survivor oh, Series wow. was James Ellsworth versus AJ Styles, and if Ellsworth won, he would get himself a SmackDown Live contract and a future WWE title shot. You know, this is the show where Ambrose just wouldn't leave the building. At the end of the night, it's a ladder match, and again, Ellsworth does it. He beats AJ Styles to officially become a contracted member of SmackDown. Next up for AJ, though, was TLC against Ambrose for the WWE title. And this match was so much fun. A match you don't really hear about much, but easily the best out of their trilogy in 2016. Just a beautiful car crash. Ambrose with an <clears throat> elbow drop off a ladder, which was already set up on top of an announce table. AJ's pants ripped, but that didn't prevent him from retaining the WWE title. What Ellsworth came out, screwed over Ambrose by tipping the ladder over, and Styles had it. We're now in December, one month away from AJ being around a full year in WWE, and he still had Ellsworth to give a title match to. But I'll a new number one contender needed to be crowned because Ellsworth was apparently sick. So it was Ambrose, Ziggler, Miz, and Luke Harper in a number one contenders match with Ziggler taking the win. So it was going to be Ziggler versus Styles on the final SmackDown of 2016. But before that, Styles gave Ellsworth his title match and he beat him in less than a minute. <clears throat> the Styles versus Ziggler match was turned into a triple threat that included Baron Corbin. And this match, banger. Corbin had an insane performance in this match. There were high spots like both Dolph and AJ taking out Corbin on the announce table. No. Corbin hitting an end of days while Ziggler hit a zigzag. So many close falls. Great pacing. Great match. And a great exclamation point for AJ Styles' 2016. Of course, he retained the WWE title. But earlier on this night, mm -hmm. Cena had returned and he made his intentions clear. He would face the winner of that triple threat match. So it was going to be Cena and AJ Styles one more time at the Rumble. Cena okay. looking to tie Ric Flair's record and AJ looking to go 3-0 and one-on-one against John Cena. So we have a contract signing. Cena was calling AJ a little bitch. Styles <laughs> was calling Cena a sellout. The same dude who made fun of The Rock for losing his passion now was <laughs> doing the exact same mm. thing. Styles was taking exception to being called a guy from Atlanta saying that he replaced Cena, and Cena just told him that Styles, he'd been hot for six months. Cena held this place down for well over a decade. Mm -hmm. This episode marked exactly one year to the day where AJ Styles made his debut. We get to the Rumble, and you guys have all seen this match. Everyone knows how good this is. These two delivered one of the best matches we've seen in recent years. High spots, hard hitting, counter for counter, battle of strength and speed, and the perfect way to end the trilogy of one-on-one -on -one matches. Arguably the best in their trilogy in front of 50,000 people, and after a double AA to AJ Styles, it was John Cena winning his 16th WWE World title. And with that concluded AJ Styles' WWE Rookie Year. And what more can you say about it? It was simply phenomenal. What made AJ Styles' Rookie Year so memorable was the pacing. He comes out at the Royal Rumble, a lot of people know who he is, but for the people who don't, they let the character breathe. They mm -hmm. give him matches against guys like Jericho and Reigns to showcase him, and then himself and John Cena oh, wow. have an instant chemistry. The chemistry leads to a run of exceptional matches. What was really nice about the initial emergence was that Vince McMahon let him showcase his in-ring talent. He gave mm -hmm. him time, he let the character develop, he gave him time to connect with the audience, and it's nice because, you know, there's always that fear that if Vince didn't create you, he will destroy you. He didn't turn him into a redneck cowboy or anything like that. He made AJ Styles a primetime player in his company. And since then, he's utilized him very well. He's been a Grand Slam champion. Came in and adapted really well. some of the really best well. matches and stories we've seen in the company. And it really proves that when WWE let people thrive, they can succeed. What's so crazy about all this is how quick AJ Styles rose up. Like this nostalgic feeling that so many of us have for SmackDown in 2016. Take AJ out of the equation. Hell, even put him into the mid card, and it's just not the same. It's not the same show we remember it as. It was AJ Styles being at the top that made it so memorable. 
the theme song, the look, the matches, everything was phenomenal. As for a good or bad grade, I give it a good. The Reigns matches were great, his mic battles with Cena were electric, the title reign was fun, the stuff with Ellsworth though, I thought it was really bad, but not that bad that it weighs down the grade. But as always, I want to hear from you guys. What did you guys think of AJ Styles' WWE Rookie Year? Was it what you expected or did you expect Vince to screw him over? As always, <laughs> take care. Peace. Okay, guys. Don't forget to see your action with some comments down below. And I will see y'all in the next one. Toodles.